Calm, Focus, Happiness. Hey, Mindful Tribe. Welcome to the show today. I'm here with a person who has been practicing vibrational healing for more than 30 years. And I am telling you, she is so well-rounded because she's done a whole lot of different things. She has podcasts. She has a podcast network. She has certifications in different fields. She has a special ability called the superpower of tracing energy patterns. And how fascinating is that? And so, I mean, so much to talk about. I'm here today with Jules Arnest. Jules, are you in mindfulness mode today? You know what? We're going to just let it come through. I feel like just like you, it's kind of a way of being all the time. It's just what level are we in? <laughs> yeah. Not always are we going to be at the highest level, but we're always there. But I know whatever is supposed to come through today is going to be amazing. I'm sure it is. Tell us what mindfulness means to you, Jules. So for me, it's the ability to have awareness of your thoughts and programming I'm even going to put there. So for me, it's the ability to know if you're in a repetitive thought connected to programming or if you're attuning to an intelligence beyond that, which would be our inner guidance, however that is, and then how aware you are of where you are. <laughs> right. Okay. How I like that. How aware you are of where you are. So that's a great phrase, Jules. It really is. And uh, I know that you have a book. Tell us about the book that you've written. You know, I know it, it's called Transcendence, but tell us more. So, yes. Yeah, so I have a book that was written, oh gosh, like eight or nine years ago. And okay. it, at the time, it was a channeled book. It was a book that I was just writing out information by attuning to that intelligence. And it kind of unraveled into this book, which is, it's called um, Transcendence, A Journey into Oneness Through the God Particle. And what it's about, it's the first part of it is you kind of bring everything into one state of consciousness, you could say, or one state of intelligence. So you're clearing your auric system, all of the chakras, and you're bringing it into one intelligence. And then the second part of the book teaches you how to hold consciousness in that intelligence. And so much has happened in those the eight to 10 years since I've wrote, written it. I'm actually writing another book that is going to be, I think, a little bit easier to follow and understand and really create a foundation based on everything that I experienced in the first book. <laughs> I'm so interested. Are you trained as a scientist? Because you seem to have such a special interest in quantum physics and all this kind of thing. I am not. I Everything that I have really learned has been by listening to the intelligence inside of me. And so much so that in 2015, I completely was, I was told through my guidance system to shut out all communication. And what I mean by that is no podcast, no YouTube channel, no reading books, no, don't listen to information except for the information that I was given through my inner guidance. And I did it. I actually to listen to my first podcast ever about two months ago since 2015. So it was, mm -hmm. I stayed true to that. And I, I still try to, because you know, I think that's what I'm finding is everything that we need to know is inside of us. And we, if we really attune and, and master the skills of how to listen to that, everything we need to know is there. And then it's cool that science is already proving what is also there. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. I think you have a, a website called activateevolution.com. Tell us how you came up with that name for the website and what that means to you. So that website is, I first started it with, I had a podcast it, when mm -hmm. it was just called Evolution because I wanted, I actually didn't want to name it. I wanted it to be my logo, which is a symbol, which is a scalar frequency. But then I realized, well, I can't just have it be a symbol because podcasting, there's no image. And so I can't, <laughs> I have to be able to tell them what it's called. So I came up, well, what about evolution? Because it's never ending. It's always evolving. And, mm -hmm. and then when I started my website, 
I was like, well, what are we actually doing with evolution? And that's when I came up with Activate. So we're activating evolution through, and of course that that website is the my I call it the DM, DNA Ascension School, or and we're using the frequency of DMT, which is part of this the scalar device or the scalar image that you see there. And then we also have our skincare line, which is bioquantumskincare.com. And that whole, all of our products hold the frequency of DMT. So using the products are activating those dormant DNA codes with the frequency of DMT, which is 963 Hertz, which is also the frequency of source intelligence. So we have both of them working together. One is to have a product to support you in the frequency and then activate evolution teaches you how to hold consciousness in that frequency. Okay. And one of the things you talk about is DECU. Tell us about that. So DQ is DNA expression cellular upgrade, and it is a step-by-step process where we teach you to go in and read the intelligence of your cells. So the first thing you start to re- read or understand or have the awareness of is kind of those old belief systems or programming that the cell is holding. And then after you kind of see, well, what do I want to take out? Just like a virus out of a a, a computer, you take the, the virus out and then you can reprogram the cell to hold a frequency of a new identity. So we use, in DQ, we use I am. So we hold the frequencies of different levels of the I am so that the cell can have an identity outside of the identity of the programming. Okay. Uh, some of this stuff is kind of going a little bit over my head. I will tell you that right now. But but one of the things I want to ask you, and if you've already answered it, uh, please excuse me. How do you create molecules on purpose? So mm, it's a, there is it's not necessarily on purpose. So okay. molecular structure. So what we're doing is we're reprogramming molecular structure. So what we're saying is that something that is in a molecular form is holding specific frequency patterns, and those frequency patterns are holding that together. And and unless it's interrupted or it's reprogrammed, it will hold that frequency pattern. So when we're intentionally creating a new molecular technology where how we're doing it is through the intelligence of the cells. So I'm going to break it down and make it really easy. So right now our cells function or the body functions by reading the environment and even our brains also like it reads the environment. Are we safe? Are we this? Those mirror neurons are always firing. Well, our cells work in a very similar way. And so what we're doing is we're going in And we're kind of taking out that primal behavior or identifying in our old belief systems that aren't necessarily serving us. And we're kind of upgrading with scalar wave frequencies, new, a new technology or a higher level technology, upgrading human potential Mm -hmm. by activating the frequency of DMT, which is 963 Hertz, or it's also the frequency of source intelligence so that the body itself is actually holding that frequency. And then you can only imagine the way I like to describe it is when you go to a really high frequency retreat and you feel really good when you're there, like you have higher consciousness, your perspective shifts, you feel good. You have all these ideas of what you're going to do to change your life because you're held in a high frequency, right? Well, that's what we're doing for the body is we're putting the body in a high frequency. So the consciousness that's in your body is also starts to resonate in that frequency. So it's the same idea, except for you don't have to go to a retreat to do it. Your body's actually holding that frequency and you're changing the environment of your body so that your consciousness can go along. That's very interesting. And tell us more about this skincare line. Is it for every human? It's for every human. We actually have a lot of men coming in. It's uh, so it is it's created more on what we call biohacking the skin. Mm-hmm. It is a med science line. And so what it's doing is it's using the cells or working with the cells would be more accurate 
to bring them into a very healthy state. So it's doing things like boosting the mitochondria and it's boosting the elex- the elastin and all of the things that you want for healthy skin. But then on a frequency level, we're, we're using the evolution technology that we use, that we also teach in the school but with the cells. So it's almost like co- like doing the coding that I was talking about. You start to code the cells so that the, it starts to hold that higher frequency. And then we use we do use the frequency of DMT so that it starts to decode molecular technology or turn on the next level of human evolution. And what we're finding, and this is science is backing this up, you can actually get a degree now in bioquantum um, biology, wow. because they're starting to show that the body actually has a quantum level. And as all we're doing is we're supporting the body into knowing that it is also multidimensional so that you can start to let go of more of those dense programs that just don't serve us. Wow. There were so much more than than that and as that's all we're doing is we're supporting the body and holding that frequency so that consciousness can meet that frequency and you feel better right jules i know that one of the things you spend most of your time doing is helping people reach their full potential and so besides the skincare line tell us what else you do with your time Gosh, I do a lot of, I, you know, I teach I'm a, and I'm always in creation. It's every time I finish a class, it's, it's almost like I get this download and okay, well, that was really good. Now we're going to show you the next level. So evolution is definitely something that I'm actively living is every time I, I get information i teach the information and then i get more and so i'm always evolving which is amazing because then everybody that's taking the classes they always have the next level to move into so they're consistently evolving too and i think that's something a little bit more unique is i i rarely teach a class more than i'll teach it twice I teach Mm -hmm. it the first time because I kind of find out what it is going to be through my teaching. I see it more clear so that I can adjust it as people are kind of attuning to the information. And then the second time I really lock it in and then I normally will pass it on to somebody else to continue teaching so that I can go to the next level. I see. Jules, do you have a story about bullying where maybe mindfulness would have made a difference that you could share with us? I I love this question. So I have two daughters and it's always out there, right? There's always yes. going to be, and there's different levels of bullying. There's, but I'll just say, I think at any time that somebody's attacking another person in order to gain energy or to get something out of it, there's always that, right? Yes, there is. And so when my daughters would come to me and they would say, oh, this person, blah, blah, blah. So some sort of bullying, shaming, that sort of thing. The first thing I would have them do is I would say, you know, let's just have you sit with what was said and feel inside yourself about what you're lacking that you took it personally right? Because what they're showing you is a weakness and they, and if you're feeling a reaction to something that they did, then, then that's your weakness. It's not even about them. And so they would, they would kind of go and, okay, so I see that I'm insecure about this. And then I would say, okay, great. That now you have somewhere to go with it. Now that you know, you're insecure in this one space, what can you do to feel more confident in that in that place, like make yourself whole where other people see weakness. And then when they attack, you have something to sit in saying, you know what, that's not true. And I see that you're saying this, but I'm not going to take that on. And then immediately it's deflected back to the person, whether they accept it or not is kind of irrelevant because the person that's being bullied remains whole. I'm going to leave it at that, but I do feel like there's so, there's so many different ways that we can handle it. But the most important thing is that we don't, we become empowered no matter what's happening around us. 
I agree with you for sure. Do you have a story about working with a client, some client in particular that has just made a wonderful transition as a result of the work that you've done together? Which one am I going to pick? Okay. <laughs> you know, Kathy's just my go-to because she has, I love her. I love her. I love her. So Kathy, she has had diabetes. She could barely walk. She was overweight and she started reprogramming her cells. She started actively participating in that intelligence that it started to turn on with her. And she came and did a retreat with me last September. By January, so what is that? Three or four months later, she had lost 35 pounds her blood sugar was down. I'm getting chills just talking about this. Uh, her blood sugar was down to a normal range. She was walking for the first time where she could feel the bottom of her feet. So she actually had to learn how to walk again because she had walked so long without being able to feel her feet. She was walking every single morning and she actually just got back from a doctor's appointment. It was a wellness check. And the doctor said, everything looks great. I'm going to send you home. And it's, I, that's, I just don't even, I mean, I think that's enough right there. <laughs> that is fantastic, Jules. That must, must feel amazing to tell that story. I got, and you know, what's even more amazing is I, uh, for Christmas, I sent her, we, I got us both matching leggings and I said that within a year, we're both going to go on a hike and wear these ma matching leggings. And she is well on her way to making that happen. <laughs> wow. That is so fantastic. I just love that story. Well, I want to, uh, move on and ask you five quick answer questions, Jules. So just 30 second answers are perfect. And the first question is this, who is one person who has been a powerful mindfulness influence in your life? It's going to take me 30 seconds to, to think about it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go, this is going to sound weird, but I'm going to go with my friend, Rob Carter, mm -hmm. and he was kind of my spirit buddy. And when, you know, when it actually hit me to attune to hearing was actually after he died. Mm -hmm. And that was such a huge impact on me because it was so important that I be able to hear him, that I silenced everything out so that I could completely go inside and be able to keep that connection. Wow, that's fascinating. Okay, well, I'd like to ask you about your emotions and how mindfulness has helped you to deal with your emotions. I have definitely feel as though that's one thing I actually love to teach is how to transcend emotion and we can actually experience it through frequency. But you're right. I mean, knowing what level of consciousness you're in knowing what you're identifying in is a huge part of that. I'm not going to say I don't have emotions anymore, but I definitely feel as though I've brought them into a whole new level of experience, which is a space where I would love everybody to get to. Right. Excellent. Let's talk about breathing. Do you have some thoughts, ideas about breathing and how it relates to mindfulness? You know, I don't do a lot with the breath. I, it's, it's, I, I, but there's always just those times where it's like, okay, ah, just reset, right? It's just reset. So maybe I, it's taking the little sigh. And then I also love to shake my hands out and just shake off the energy. And that's enough to just get right back into it. Right. Let's talk about a book. Is there a book that you recommend that is related to mindfulness? Yes. So this is a book I don't even know if many people have heard of it, but it's called Frequency by Penny Pierce. And it is such a well done book of being able to identify uh, what frequency that you kind of vibrate in and then being able to identify the frequencies around you so that you can only, I guess, pick up on or have 
that sovereignty of, okay, this is my frequency and this is my programming, right? So when the, just like that bullying situation, when other things come at me, I am so aware of what is mine that I can easily say no to what's not if I choose. Right, right. Is there an app that you can tell us about? And I'm pretty sure you have an app yourself and I'm pretty (laughs) sure you'll tell us about it, but that's what I'd like to hear. Yes, because that's really the only app that I actually know because I don't really do a lot with apps. So it is called Evo Star and it's, uh, what does it stand for? Evolution Scalar Evo. I don't even remember. Isn't that horrible? But anyways, you can just go to Evo Star in the app store and you can download it. And it's all about using quantum frequency in order to balance the body or turn on those specific frequencies in that more quantum body experience. It's a lot of fun to do and it's free. So you can actually go and check it out. Can you tell us a little bit more about that app and how it works? I'm fascinated. I love this. So yes, it's really easy. You open up the app and the first thing it'll ask you is what do you want to work on? So it can be things like abundance or manifesting or pain. It can be weight loss. So you kind of choose what do I want to focus on? What frequency do I want to focus on? And then you upload your picture and you can put your picture there. And then there's little quantum body shows up and you'll see your picture go into the quantum body. So then now the technology is reading through your picture where to send the frequency and the freak, the quantum body will start to, to kind of move. And as it's doing that, you're listening to a meditation. There's actually six different meditations that you'll go through that will upgrade through the squid, the evolution technology to hold that frequency pattern in your body. So it's best to do it over a 21 day period of time so that you are consistently bringing that frequency into the body until it can hold it for itself. And then of course, to actively participate in that frequency would be when you would use mindfulness (laughs) and kind of allow yourself to, to shift out of old programming into something that is much higher. That's really fascinating. Jules, it's been so much fun talking to you on mindfulness mode. And before we leave, I want to ask you if you have any final words of advice for our mindful tribe listeners. Oh, advice. Um, you know, I, I, I feel as though now more than ever, people just need to have permission to just be you. Just be you, love you, and stop caring about what other people think. And I know that's a lot easier to say than do, but if it's something that we practice consistently, that self-love just gets a lot bigger and we start to realize, you know what? I really am awesome. And you are awesome. If you're listening to this, you are amazing and you're amazing just the way you are. Own it because you're who you are on that authentic level. The world needs that person, not the person that is hiding or staying small because they're afraid of what other people will think. Right. Good advice. Well, Jules, Thank you again for being on the Mindfulness Mode podcast, and uh, you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun, Bruce. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye now. Okay.